I can confirm that we have reached a political agreement to provide additional financial support to Ukraine of about $50 billion by the end of the year, through a loan mechanism for the repayment of which the extra profits from Russian assets tied up in our jurisdictions can be used. We are not talking about a confiscation of these assets, but of the interest that accrues over time. It is a strong signal that uh, we are sending to Ukraine that we will support Ukraine in its fight for freedom for as long as it takes. So all G7 are contributing uh, to this loan in so far as they have parts of the loan that is given to Ukraine. It is the windfall profits uh, um, from the Russian immobilized assets in Europe that will serve it. And the finance ministers are now going through the details. U.S. President Joe Biden and Ukraine President Vladimir Zelensky signed a 10-year bilateral security agreement on Thursday aimed at bolstering Ukraine's defense against Russian invaders. The deal signed on the sidelines of the G7 summit in Italy aims to commit future U.S. administrations to support Ukraine, even if former President Donald Trump wins November's election, officials said. The agreement indicates the U.S. will provide weapons and ammunition and intelligence sharing and is meant to be a step toward Ukraine's eventual NATO membership. Zelensky has long sought this, but allies have stopped short of taking that step. We've had a very productive set of meetings today, particularly on Ukraine, where I've been discussing with my colleagues a game-changing package of support for Ukraine that would be funded by the profits on seized Russian assets. Now, this is something that I and the UK have personally championed and led on for a while now, so it's very positive to see it 